Hey everybody. So, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you know that while I was living in Germany, especially, I always had my nails done. I always, well not always, but I usually tried to keep my nails looking long and beautiful and black and shiny and claw-like because it was relatively cheap to get them done over there. And it was always a bit of a fun slash slightly awkward experience because my German wasn't very good and neither was the German of the ladies who would do the nails. So basically I would just go in there and like show them a picture of what I wanted and they would just do it and it was immaculate. However, since I've been back in New Zealand, I've gone to get my nails done a couple of times and it costs a bit more to do it here, which is a bit shit. I used to just sort of always think getting your nails done was something that only rich people could have because <laughs> it was always so expensive. It's not as expensive as it used to be, but it still costs more than it did in Germany anyway. I've been here in two different cities to two different salons with different nail technicians and both times they did a shit job. Like they did the worst job I've ever seen and I was very close to leaving a negative review. The first time especially, this happened again the second time, but especially the first time, they ground my own nails down so much that there was like this really deep crescent shape carved into my nails and each one of them that was like almost down to the nail bed. Like it did not feel good. Neither time did they actually give me nails that looked anything like the picture I'd given them. Last time I went to get my nails done I asked for acrylics. I showed them a picture of some very sharp stilettos, right? That's what I wanted. I just want really long sharp stiletto nails. What I ended up getting was these long round paddle looking things. And about a week, a week and a half later they were all either snapped in half or completely gone. So that was really shit. <laughs> anyway, so when I was there last time they did this technique that I'd never seen before. They advertised that they did s and &S nails, not really knowing what that was. I just said like, I just want acrylics, just like a normal set of acrylics please. The lady was like so unfriendly and so rude, she just seemed to like want to get them done quickly. A lot of you are probably like completely familiar with this technique but I'd never seen it before. And instead of like, you know, using the wee brush to make the little blob of like acrylic jelly goo um, and spreading it on. Basically they just put like a layer of something on your nail and then dip it into powder and repeat and then file it into a shape and I was like well I could do that. So I looked it up. I looked up to see what materials you would need in order to do the kind of dip powder nails at home. So I went out and I found locally a kit so I could try and do my own nails at home and I don't think I did too badly. I have tried to do my own acrylic nails in the past, you know, the traditional way, but it's such an appallingly bad job. I don't even know how I did it. I don't know how I did such a bad job. Like, like they were, they were, they were hideous. They were not only hideous, but they were painful. And I'm just like, I can't get rid of it. Like, what do I, what do I do? I hope nobody looks. I was a wee bit hesitant to give this new method a try, but I did it. And it's not perfect by any means. I no longer feel like I can trust a local nail technician not to do a shit job. I mean for much less money I can do a shit job myself. So join me now in having a go doing my own nails. My first time ever trying to give myself properly a manicure uh, using this dip powder method. Let's go. As you can see, my nails are pretty terrible. It's very hard for me to grow my nails long. They've always been very soft and brittle. One of the reasons for that is I've had anemia most of my life and anemia makes your nails really shit. It can actually make them turn inside out. Eww. Spoon nails it's called, I've never had that. But anyway, really hard for me, even with nail hardness and stuff, to get long, hard nails. That's pathetic, look how soft that is. So if anybody needs their nails done, it's me. But that shit's so expensive. So I got some plain press on nails and this kit to try and in the kit is apparently everything you need to do a salon quality manicure at home. So in the box we've got the activator. I guess this little tray thing is for putting the powder in to make the dipping easier. A wee buffer thingy. Base gel. Top gel, a brush softener, a couple of extra brushes, a wee stick for pushing back cuticles, the sponge, which I assume is for dusting. Most things I've seen have said to use a brush, but I'm sure the sponge will be fine. And this here will be the dip powder. I kind of wonder how many uses you can get out of this little bottle. I've also got this nail file and a pair of clippers and some just ordinary black nail polish. This is apparently Rita Ora colored nail polish. I don't actually know who she is, but I have heard the name before. Some sort of celebrity. Let's begin, shall we? I'm just going to start by filing my own nails to make them a bit nicer. The nail technicians, they always file them and cut them right down to nothing. I'm like, surely the extra strength <laughs> is a good thing. Surely having like your natural nail underneath be longer. Is there like a reason that they always completely cut them off before they get started? A wee bit of a buff so that the glue and 
everything else should hopefully adhere better. If you can hear a bit of a whooshing sound or a rattling sound, it's because it's very, very windy outside and the window is open. Do I need to put all of it in? Probably. I'll put it all in. I guess I can pour whatever's left over back into the jar. But first, because these false nails are so short, my plan is to sort of put them on, not all the way down, but like a wee bit further up and shape them. I know this isn't the right kind of nail tip for doing that, but I don't have any and I'm unable to obtain any. Now in the past I've bought these long stiletto tips off of eBay, but like nothing is arriving in the post because of COVID. We usually get stuff from, from like around Asia, nothing <laughs> arriving. Give this a whirl. Stick you bitch. Fingers crossed. Oh, sorry if the camera slips in and out of focus a wee bit. This camera has had a good long life and it's frankly incredible that it still works after all it's been through. The main problem I have with it is focus. But like me, the main problem I have is focus. I'm sure that anyone who's actually competent with nails is going to watch this and absolutely weep. <laughs> Try not to stick my fingers together. I've never wanted to become a nail technician, but I have gone through phases of being, I go through phases of being excited by random stuff and I have certainly gone through nail art phases before. I've never been in that phase long enough to actually become good at it. I feel like a lot of the things that I want to learn how to do come from me just kind of being cheap. Being like, I don't want to pay for that, I can do it myself. Don't want any air bubbles. <laughs> Keep sticking my fingers. I don't know how the glue's getting everywhere, man. I feel like I'm being fairly careful and yet. So there's me wrong kind of tip stuck on. Wait for those to dry. Now for something that I'm actually pretty scared of, which is cutting them to the right shape. Do it quite gently. I hope I don't fuck up too egregiously. Whenever I've gone to the nail salon, I've been like, can you make them look kind of like claws? And they never do. As much as it does look super cool for them to be very sharp, you don't actually want to poke your eye out or hurt yourself when you're putting makeup on. This is really hard to do from this angle. It's a learning experience. Okay, that was my finger. That is not too bad. That one, kind of bad. That one, not too bad. That's the part that I thought would be the trickiest and it turns out it's pretty tricky. So now I will cut the other hand to match. I've done the other hand and it really turned out that these clippers, perfect for like doing the sides, and making the shape right so now I know in future maybe not for longer nails like the thumb I had to use the scissors but for these shorter ones this little doodad was perfect as you can see the edges are very very rough they need to be smoothened down so that I can do the rest of the process yes all right I think they're satisfactorily filed so now I'm going to give them a wee bit of a buff I'm not actually sure which side I use a wee bit of a buff so that the dipping stuff will adhere to the false nails as well. I will admit I am quite nervous now because here's the moment of truth. This is like I guess just a natural colour. I know you can get this dip powder in all kinds of different colours but this is the only one that was available. Welcome to New Zealand. <laughs> you have a choice. I suppose I have to push down the cuticles. That's something I ought not to forget. The end of this thing is probably better for that and quicker. Everything said not to apply this stuff too thickly and to keep it kind of away from your cuticles, but also to dip the moment you've put it on. Okay. think that was kind of successful. You do about like at least three coats of this so dip immediately all right. Try very hard not to get it on your skin. Maybe I shouldn't do just directly one after the other. I'll just do like nail after nail, eh? One of the things I read said to kind of start in the center of the nail and then push out towards the cuticles so you don't get too much gel around the cuticles and therefore stuck to your skin, which is phenomenally difficult to get off. I see, it's not going on quite perfectly. You can see, for example, right there, there's a spot where I didn't get any of the gel. It just means be a bit more careful. 
apparently if it's too difficult to dip your nails you can sprinkle the stuff on top and that will also work I'm concerned about it going onto my skin and sticking there it's actually pretty relaxing whoops shit I got some on the skin I'll be very quick oh fuck ah getting everywhere I'll be very quick to remove it there it goes Ugh, it's all goopy I really hope this works out because I am actually so far kind of enjoying this doing stuff with your hands is like pretty relaxing I figure I'll do like each nail before like dusting off just to make sure it's got time to dry or absorb whatever it does in case I accidentally fuck it with the sponge no one likes getting accidentally fucked by a sponge oh it's a wee bit lumpy but it doesn't really matter because we'll be filing it down afterwards anyway another two more coats to go after this so far not not well fine i'm not gonna say so good medium okay next layer I am making such a fucking mess, this shit is everywhere and I swear it's in my eyes and not my nose. My eyes are kind of burning, which is probably not a good sign. The stuff that stinks is the base gel, it's really fucking getting to me actually. Like making my nose burn, my eyes burn, I don't like it. I guess I'll close that up for a wee minute, crack out our little friend the sponge. We are not looking all that good. There are chunks missing and there are sort of blitz where it's like blobbed out on the side. What I'll do is after I've done like the third layer very carefully file away all the bits that should not be there, all the bits that should be, then apply the activator and that's what does a chemical reaction or something like that and that makes it hard. Right it's a learning process. Since I've got like a wee bit missing just in here Apparently to make it like a wee bit kind of more claw-like we want to put it an extra bit in the centre. Let's do that. May not have been a very good idea, but we have done it. A bit missing there. A bit missing. Get in there. There we go. Layer number three. Just gonna give this thumbnail that I did that like extra centre strike bit on a bit of an extra coat. Just give that another complete go over. And that's it. Oh, thank God I can put this base gel away. It stinks! Oh my God, my poor senses. I do not look, as you can see, very neat. It could have been worse. If you'd seen the job of acrylics I did that time, holy shit you would be crying because I just about was. These aren't finished yet so I'm going to very carefully file off the blobby bits before I put the activator on because then you buff and then you put more activator on after that but I really want to make sure I get rid of all these bits of shit before they get too hard. Oh, it's gross because it's like it looks like skin. Ouch, ouch. We've sprung a little bit of blood but that's okay. I hope this stuff doesn't stink too. My poor nostrils. Ooh, she does. That is fucking fumey. Do not put this near an open flame. Oh god, it got into the cut bit. Every little bit of this that touches my skin is like burning. After this we can file it and buff it and then you apply a wee bit more of this. Now's my chance to unfuck the lumpy shape of them. This one for example is easily the worst so start there I guess. Whoa, fuck. I just pulled away the paper towel that I had here for wiping the brush of base gel. It has done this to my desk. <laughs> I guess that looks like it's gonna come off. Protect your surfaces, my word. I know it's not perfect, but it's a little bit better than it was. I think that's about as smooth as I can get them with my very little nail doing experience or so. The next step, now that they are buffed, I've given them a wee bit of a clean, to apply another coat of the activator and then to dab it off with the paper towel and then apply two layers of the top coat. I'm going to put the black over the top of the top gel. I don't know if that's very sensible, but that's what I'm gonna do. Oh my God, it's stinging my skin. I don't think I even touched it that time. What is it made of? Fucking hellfire in a bottle? Next, we apply two layers of top gel. The absolute olfactory onslaught of this process. Against my skin tone, this colour looks horrible, doesn't it? That has to be let dry for about 10 minutes and then I will put on the black. Okay, 
they dry. The reason I decided just to get ordinary black nail polish rather than a fancy one was because when I got my nails done with s, &S at the salon, that's all they used and I felt a little bit ripped off honestly and also because that other shit's expensive. Don't fuck up. Uh, these um, blobs that are everywhere are actually just me it's just being artistic, it's not an accident. I think what I'll do for the, the mess that I've made, clean it up with a wee bit of nail polish remover on a Q-tip. I ran the nail where I made a mess. Oh fuck, that stings like a motherfucker. The nail polish remover was way more trouble than it was worth. It's taken me ages to clean it up and now I'm like, fuck it, it's fine. A top coat would have been good, but I don't have one. I tested a little bit of this on top of this and what it did was dissolve this, so don't do that. The last thing they usually do at the salon, which just is recommended anyway, is to use a bit of cuticle oil, but I do not have any. However, this is more or less the same thing. I'm just gonna massage a wee bit of that on. It's not the tidiest job that anybody's ever done, but it's actually better than I expected. I thought I would do a much worse job. This was infinitely easier than doing like acrylic. If you want to have a crack at doing like acrylic nails at home, the dip powder method was so much easier. It's not perfect, but it's not bad for a first go. It's just around these parts where it's kind of messy, but the actual shape of them, I think I did the shape quite well. So I'm quite pleased with that. And I feel like I really learned from this experience and I feel like it'll just get easier and easier every time I do it now that I know what to do and what not to do. Hopefully they will last a while. Last time I went to a salon it lasted about a week until they started snapping in half and coming off completely. So if my own effort can beat that then it will have been worth it. So yeah, there we are. I don't think I did too badly. How do you think I did? I mean, I know it wasn't perfect. I know it's a wee bit messy, but I honestly expected it to turn out way, way worse. I mean, that's how you should live life in general. Keep your expectations really low so you can't be disappointed. And if things go better than you expected, then you'll be stoked. So I'm pretty stoked. I feel like in general they look okay, like the shape turned out a wee bit better. And it was especially, I mean, it would have been a lot less difficult if I had had the proper stiletto tips to already shape. This is normally not as long as I would have them, but you know. The nails that I glued on were the only ones I could find locally and so I will have another crack getting some longer stiletto tips off the internet. eBay usually has some. I don't know how long these are going to last but they feel pretty solid. They feel like they're not going anywhere. I'm pretty satisfied and it's very satisfying doing something yourself. Especially if it's something you've never done before and it turns out okay. It's not a disaster, it turns out okay. It's like, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of that. Hey everybody, look at me. I'm not as much of a loser as I thought I was. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if you were the kind of person who wanted to see my fingers bleeding. The kind of person who enjoys blood, but I omitted those parts. There was blood. There wasn't a lot of blood, but there, there, there was blood. Next time I'll, I'll be a bit more careful. Thanks very much for joining me. I have been very much in the DIY spirit lately. And I think, especially like, like I say, being in New Zealand, there isn't much stuff here. <laughs> There's not much you can do by way of shopping, especially not online shopping. So you have to get a little bit creative. You have to try and do stuff yourself if you want cool things. So I've really gotten into like the DIY mindset. So I've got quite a lot of DIY stuff coming up in future videos. Some of which are pretty ambitious. Try something new that seems difficult, it might go well, and if it does, it's like, fuck yeah, go me. So there's potentially something to look forward to. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel, you know you want to. And as always, take care of yourself, be nice to each other, try new things, you might be good at them. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.